Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Dr. Stephen Roth and I'm a board certified oral and maxillofacial pathologist. One of the most common questions that I get in my comment section, Instagram DMs, follow me at Stephen Roth EDS if you haven't already, and emails is how to become an oral pathologist. Because of this, I thought it may be a good idea to discuss the path you can take to become an oral pathologist. But first, we have to get into that disclaimer, which is that all opinions expressed in this video are mine and mine alone and do not represent any organization that may employ me or that I may belong to, and that this video is for educational purposes only and should not serve as medical advice. Should you have any questions or concerns about your oral or systemic health, please see your nearest oral or systemic health care provider. So, you want to become an oral pathologist. First, excellent decision. Second, be sure to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already so you can continue to increase your oral pathology knowledge. Thanks to those who have already. And next, we have to talk about the training that it takes to get here. First, you have to apply to dental school. This requires graduation from an undergraduate program, most if not all dental schools requiring a bachelor's degree. You also need to take the Dental Admissions Test, or DAT, for every school in the U.S. except for one that's opening soon. Once you've applied and gotten into dental school, it's important that you work hard academically. While overall grades may not be quite as important as other specialties, it will be a red flag if you don't perform well in your pathology and oral pathology courses. So make sure that you do well in those. If you're truly interested in oral pathology, this shouldn't be too difficult because you'll actually enjoy studying and learning everything oral path. It's also a good idea to form a relationship with your oral pathologist at your dental school. The profession of oral pathology is super small. We all pretty much know each other. You will want your oral pathologist to write you a great recommendation as well as advocate for you when it comes time to apply to oral pathology programs. You will also want to spend some time at the microscope. A lot of oral pathology training involves microscopic examination of biopsy tissue. You want to make sure that this is something that you actually enjoy. You will spend hours in training looking at microscope slides, and if you don't like doing that, then oral pathology is probably not for you. You may want to consider a patient-focused specialty, like orofacial pain or oral medicine. At this point, you're a dental student, that has shadowed their oral pathology faculty and spent some time at the microscope, and now you're ready to look into applying to residency programs. There are currently, as of 2024, 13 residency programs in the United States. All of them are excellent, but each has a different culture. You'll receive a great education at any of the programs, but you want to go to a program that best fits your personality and your goals. I would recommend perhaps visiting multiple programs prior to applying to get a feel for their culture. You're going to spend three years in residency, and you want to make sure that you'll be happy during your time in training. Once you've narrowed down your programs, it's time to apply. Most programs have their own application process. Two programs are currently using the PASS application. If you're uncertain as to how to apply, reach out to the program director and they'll better direct you. The application can vary from simple to complex with different essay questions. After applications, hopefully you've landed an interview. Interviews too vary from program to program. Some are very formal with scheduled times with each faculty member in the current residence, and others are more laid back and more informal, an opportunity to show you the program and answer your questions with little formality. Be aware that one or two residency programs may require a quiz at your interview. Double check before you arrive if that's the case so that you're prepared. The programs that I applied to did not require a quiz, but I have heard that some do. The best way to ace your interview is to simply be yourself. You want to make sure that you fit into their culture as much as they want to make sure you fit into theirs. It's kind of like dating. Just be yourself and answer honestly. It's always good to have some questions prepared to help you better determine if this program is a fit. Does the program require call? How are rotations structured? Are there any formal classes? These are a few good starter questions. After all your interviews, you'll have a program or two narrowed down and you wait for acceptances. Once accepted, 
Focus on finishing your requirements, getting your degree, and then get ready for your program. So far, I've been approaching this from the perspective of being a dental student. I want to emphasize that it is not uncommon for applicants to have practiced dentistry for a few years. Do not assume that you are at a disadvantage if you did not come straight from dental school. Real life application of what you learn in practice is also a great part of being a candidate. Also, if you graduated from a non-US or Canadian dental school, you can still apply to programs. Some programs, especially those that receive funds from GME or graduate medical education through the government, are unable to accept applicants with degrees outside of the United States or Canada. If the program is associated with a dental school, it is more likely that they're able to accept dentists trained in other countries. If this applies to you, you can always email the program director to see what their policy is for dentists trained outside of the United States or Canada. Okay, so you are now in residency. Congrats! I loved my time as a resident. Maybe even more than I've loved being an attending. You get to enjoy the next three years diving deep into clinical and histologic diagnoses. It is your responsibility to learn everything you can. Take advantage of these resources now. At the end of residency, you will challenge two exams. The first exam is the fellowship exam, which is run by the American Academy of Oral and Maxillofacial Pathology, or AAOMP. Passage of this exam allows you to become a fellow. This exam contains three parts, microscopic diagnoses, clinical diagnoses, and multiple choice questions. You can take this exam starting in your second year, though most people choose to wait until their final year of residency to challenge the exam as a good way to practice for the board exam. This exam is taken at the Academy's annual meeting that occurs every year. After graduation, you're able to challenge the board exam. The board exam is administered by the American Board of Oral and Maxillofacial Pathology, or ABOMP. This two-day exam is administered at testing centers once a year in the fall, which is usually a few months after graduation. It is a challenging exam that also consists of microscopic diagnoses, clinical cases, and multiple choice questions. Once you successfully challenge the exam and become a diplomate within the Board of Oral and Maxillofacial Pathology, you can officially call yourself a Board Certified Oral and Maxillofacial Pathologist, or a oral pathology specialist. Now you get to find a job. The job market is admittedly tight, but I will say that I'm optimistic. More and more oral pathologists are choosing to retire, leaving vacant positions for new graduates. Also, there are several dental schools that will be opening within the next few years. These new schools should hire an oral pathologist to their faculty, both as a service to their students and to their patient populations. Who knows, maybe that will be you. I'm also optimistic for the future of clinical care and histologic diagnoses. I do think there will be plenty of opportunities to start your own private practice, be it something that you pursue with patient care or from the microscope end. So there's the journey ahead. Graduate dental school, enter residency, crush your exams, and land your dream job. If you need any help along the way, please do not hesitate to reach out to ask me your questions. I'd be more than happy to answer them. Thanks for watching. I do hope that you found this video helpful. Be sure to like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. And as always, be well.